Hey now, welcome to this guide to speedrunning River City Ransom Novice Difficulty, where I'll lay out the route to beat the game in a marathon setting and provide some useful hints and tech that will decrease your completion time and increase your consistency. Let's start with the easiest time save. Always play as Ryan, the blue shirt dude on the right. The only difference when playing as Alex is that Roxy and Simon have more dialogue, which loses about 8 seconds, but everything else is identical. To start running by mashing right, and about a second after the screen scrolls right, press A and B to do a high jump. You begin with $20, but need an additional $6.95 to purchase stone hands. You lose half your money when you die, so just grind the cash on the first two screens to get it done before anything else. When you've collected at least $24, exit the room to the right. It's useful to know which gang you encounter, so make sure to glance at the bottom of the screen every time you enter a new room. If you get generic dudes, frat guys, or jocks, collect the remaining money and go straight to the last shop in Grotto Mall and buy stone hands. But if you get homeboys, mob, or an empty room, which is indicated by a blank line under the room name, then refresh the room by going back into the first room and re-enter. The next room is easy, just keep tapping down whilst you're running as soon as the screen starts scrolling and you should be fine. A quick hint is that you don't lose any time by moving up and down while running, but walking diagonally is slower than straight up or side to side and should be avoided where possible. The next room has a big old pit directly in front of you, so make sure to move up before running right and go up into Waterfront Mall. Then, once Roxy disappears, run right and through downtown into the pre-warehouse room. Watch out for the pit and collect the crate, punching anyone who gets in your way. If you're lucky and two enemies are visible on screen as you enter, just throw away the crate and take them out with stone hands. But if you get generic dudes, frat guys, squids or internationals, it's strongly recommended to just reset the room using the door you just passed through. The mob can be particularly uncooperative. Also, an empty room obviously requires you to reset the room. If either one or both spawn on the other side of the partition, take out the nearby spawn if available, and rub up against the partition by holding left and up or down until they cling to the wall, and once the first pair of enemies has been eliminated, platform your way to here but no further until the coins have despawned, or the final pair of enemies can spawn behind you, which can unnecessarily cost a considerable amount of time. It may be more comfortable for you to stand on top of enemies and mash punch, but the Dragon Twins will be almost impossible with that strategy, so I urge you to implement running attacks wherever possible against gangs and especially against bosses. When Rocket's corpse starts flashing, Quickly grab your crate and lower your stamina to zero before running into the wall. As you're running past the trash pickup sign, press A and B to do a high jump. There's a hidden mechanic in the game that wasn't discovered for over 30 years after its release that we have called floating state. Basically, there is a register in memory that keeps track of the last way that Ryan left to the ground. And for some reason, the only time that the game checks this value is to calculate the damage dealt from all of Ryan's attacks when on the ground, and increments the attack power if, and only if, this value corresponds to the action of a high jump. Thankfully, this state can be triggered by jumping into a screen transition, which only costs a few frames to perform, and doesn't get reset by further room transitions. If you do get knocked over or run into a wall, just forget about it, since you'll probably lose more time by trying to re-trigger it. Back to the run. If someone gets in your way, don't hesitate to throw a punch and keep running. Just avoid the pits and ignore the crate this time. At the post warehouse room, hold down as you enter the connecting door while you mash right, then hold up at the pre-tunnel room and mash right again, and keep holding up in the tunnel while you mash right until you touch the top wall, and then hold down instead unless there's something in your way. Make sure to activate floating state as you leave the tunnel by jumping right before the screen transition. The next room is Turks, which you will need to clear out before he appears. This room can be empty, so walk back and buffer walking right in the tunnel to reset the room if that occurs. None of the remaining boss rooms can be empty, 
so just clear out whatever gang that you encounter and finish off Mojo. Mojo is the only boss other than Slick who has more than one screen of dialogue, so make sure his coin spawns before you leave Flatirons Mall. If you want to be super safe, you can grab a lamb leg from the butcher shop in the second part of the mall to grant you three rounds of willpower. It's probably a good idea unless you're grinding for a PB. The route here more or less converges with that of the current world record, but we won't bother with some of the more precise strats and keep hammering away with stone hands. The pre-factory room is often swarming with squids, and if they're not on screen as you enter, they'll probably intercept you as you attempt to round the corner to the factory interior, so it's best to punch as you come to a stop. The first room of the factory can get really dicey depending on which gang spawns and where, so I'd recommend not going for the jump, instead running down off the ledge and moving down slightly to lure any gangs off the opposite ledge. Run through Oak Hill Mall and activate floating state as you pass the sauna. The next room unfortunately is a bit of a headache and there's not really a good solution. All the high level gangs can spawn here, so try to learn their patterns to avoid getting hit, or just accept the few seconds time loss and carefully run down and around them to get through to Ivan's room. Internationals have a 50% chance to appear here, and their AI is very exploitable. As long as you don't enter with the weapon, and they don't bring any of their own, they will be blindly drawn to the tyre in the top left corner, so just play defence and safely take them out as they approach it. Against any other gang, engaging them with running stone hands will be essential to taking them out. Ivan shouldn't give you much trouble as long as he doesn't get away from you. The gym is possibly the most inconsistent room in the whole run, after the warehouse. Sometimes an enemy will spawn frozen in place in the top left corner above you, and if you can't throw something, or someone, at them to knock them down, you'll need to reset the room as soon as possible. They can also get stuck between the balance beams in the middle of the room, and if you go too far to the right, they'll spawn behind you and bounce back and forth between the bleachers and the wall. All this, combined with the hardest gangs in the game and some of the jankiest collision, makes for a difficult room to offer advice, other than to focus most of your practice towards the end game, especially the gym. Once you've dispatched Otis, head upstairs by running down and around the bleachers and directly beneath the basketball hoop. Jump in place and keep buffering up when you land until you do a small hop, which means you can let go of up, jump two more times and then just run left and buffer up to enter the door. On the top floor, taking it safe is probably the more sensible option, since a death here is quite a significant time loss. Once the enemies are cleared out, run right and hug the top wall and do a high jump at the poster to activate floating state. And now for the hardest part of the run. The timing and spacing is tight, but with practice you should be able to get it consistently. An early stone hands will take longer since only 2 out of 3 punches will land, but a late stone hands can spell disaster. When you do start to feel confident with the twin swipe, you should split them up after the 6th round of stone hands by delivering separate punches to each while standing still, which saves 8 seconds of dialogue only if the second twin is defeated while the first coin is still on screen. Thankfully, Slick is a step back down in difficulty, especially if you still have at least one round of willpower. His reserves of stamina and willpower will require almost a dozen rounds of stone hands to deplete. But as long as you maintain your timing, he should go down without too much trouble. Don't run into a wall or leave the room, and you will have completed the run. Congratulations. The River City Ransom Speedrun has been lovingly described as a running simulator with a boss rush, and this route emphasises that sentiment. And if you decide to level up your tech to a flat iron stone hands route or explore other categories, please feel free to join our Discord to get access to all the latest strats and speak with some of the top players from all around the world. If you need additional help with how to perform any of the strats outlined in this video, a more in-depth video from 2020 by former world record holder Yelsrake is available to you. Links are in the description. We hope to see you soon. Best of luck on your journey and take care.